One of the first things to do before we start configuring the phone and the VPN client on the phone is to make sure that it's running the latest version of the firmware. Uh, if you go to my blog, you'll see my personal blog, you'll see a, an article highlighting some of the stages required to, to uh, configure the VPN client. One of the first stages is to basically um, check that we're running the latest firmware. The phone we have is running version uh, 6.61.23.7 as you can see there's a later one uh, .16 so I recommend downloading that and flashing the phone before proceeding if you go back to my article it also does mention that after the phone has rebooted after you've initially flashed, flashed it do allow it to, to, uh, to boot properly uh, power off the phone disconnect the power and then turn it back on and let it reboot I've seen occasions if, if you don't allow this to happen, the phone behaves um, rather strangely, which can screw, screw your uh, your results. So yeah, power it off, turn it for 15 to 20 seconds, and then continue doing the um, the configuration, which I'll just show you as we proceed. Okay, you've just upgraded your phone, and this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to generate the certificate, which is going to be loaded onto the phone. In this example, I'm using IP Brick Unified Communications. Um, I pref personally prefer IP Brick Unified Communications because it contains all the key components required for this this kind of task. It contains the telephone server, the VoIP server, as well as the VPN platform itself. So it's a truly is a unified platform. I'm going to assume that you've created the certificate for the server, and you've also created the access policy for the handset. Um, the access policy is required, well at least highly recommended because we are going to remove the passphrase so, of the certificate which you will see in, in a moment and this will restrict the access of the phone at, which we're using purely for VoIP obviously. So what we're going to do now is create the certificate for our handset which we're going to download. The rest of this information I will explain in an alternative video. This is how you create the certificate under the SSL options, the VPN. We're going to call this one Handset 101. I'm also assuming that you've configured the, the handset in your dull plan. This is purely focusing on how to get the VPN up and running. This is the passphrase that the IP brick is insisting that you apply to the certificate quite rightly and this is where we apply our permission policy we've, act, we've created earlier so now the certificate has been generated once the certificate has been generated we will then follow a procedure to load the certificate onto the phone. So first of all let's download our certificate. Download it. Save. Okay so we now have a zip file. I think I have down one earlier. You have our zip file, handset 101. Now to actually follow the procedure we need to obtain some information from Yearlink. Okay, as a process. But what I recommend is to go to this file and download a zip file which contains a document which shows instructions on how to set the, um, the VPN up. So if you make a note of that URL, I shall post it in the description of this video. Okay, so now we need to go through the process of configuring our phone. Okay, for this next stage we're going to need a couple of tools. The first one is Cygwin. If you're running Windows, you're going to need Cygwin or OpenSSL by itself. Cygwin comes with an installable package for OpenSSL. We will need this to extract the personal, uh, the passcode from the, um, pub from the private key which the IP brick generated for the phone. We're also going to need 7-zip. 7-zip is used um, 
to create the tar file which we will upload to the phone. If you're running Windows or sorry, if you're running Mac or Linux, then you don't need these tools because Linux and Mac comes with those tools installed already. Now what we're going to do, what I've done here, the file we downloaded from Yearlink contains an example tar file which I've extracted here. And we can see the format. We've got the VPN config file and number of private keys and the server certificate here. We need to replicate that. We need to copy that and create the format to upload to the phone. And I'm doing that under this same folder. So here we've got a keys folder which is currently empty. So what I'm going to do is copy the example VPN config file and I'm going to paste that in here. Okay. Now we also need to extract our private key. This is where we need OpenSSL. Okay. What I'm going to use here is a command I prepared earlier. OpenSSL RS space RSA minus in handset 101.key. This is the key with the private password on it that the IP brick generated. And now we're going to create it, recreate it without the pass key in our T26 folder. Okay, so if we do that, enter our passphrase. Okay, now if we look in our T26 folder, we have our client key without a passcode. Okay, now what we need to do is to alter our config file, which I will show you now. Okay, now here I've opened the VPN config file, which the IP brick generated. In this case, it's called handset one. 101.ovpn which resides here and then I've opened vpn.cnf which is our example config file downloaded from OpenVPN which we've copied here so here we're only going to change one thing and that's the address of our IP brick server so I copy that and I find the remote so here if we scroll down we should find remote at the top here, there we go, there's our example, so we need to replace that with our actual server, which is here, and save. And that's it. Now depending, if you're not using IP brick, you might need to change some other things. Um, but I know this works. Um, the rest of it, oh yeah, there is one more thing I forgot to change, which is the protocol. IP brick uses UDP our example uses TCP so we need to alter that as well so if we uncomment that and we use protocol UDP instead of TCP okay your mileage may vary if you're not using IP brick silly you but uh, we'll forgive you for that you might need to use some alternative configurations in here okay okay so we're nearly there now we've built our vpn.cnf file what we need to cater for now is our server certificate and the client certificate we've dealt with the key and we've dealt with the config so what we're going to do here if we look at our cnf file we've got ca.cert client1.cert and client1.key i've renamed that key to client1 in my earlier example where i I changed the certificate I should have done client one. Now to tell the truth you should be able to call these any anything you want but I've during my testings I've, I've found whether it's a typo on my part I found problems if I renamed these. Uh, maybe someone can correct me or show me the correct way of doing this but this is the way I've known and seen it work. So we need to copy the CA cert and the client one cert so what we're going to do if we go back to our directory that contains the certs that the IP brick generated and we copy our CA cert and our client cert and we paste these in here and now we have to rename them so this is going to be called CA cert and 
and this one's going to be called client 101 sorry client 1 we now have our config ready to be uploaded to our phone but first of all let but before you can upload the um, config we have to create a tar file this is why we created the t26 vpn folder so we can gather uh, the files we need to create the folder so what we're going to do if we open up 7-zip this is what we needed 7-zip earlier we're going to use this tool to create our client dot tar file this is what this has all been about is to create this file to upload to our phone so make sure you select tar the phone will not accept any other format and make sure it's uncompressed it's just a normal regular tar file so if we rename that now to client dot tar again this could probably be changed but I'm just sticking to the uh, example and now let's check the contents make sure it's uh, as we expected and there we go we've got our keys folder and we've got our vpn.cnf file okay this is the last part of the configuration We've just logged into the uh, phone and we're just about to load the tile file we just created using 7-zip. So we go to network and advanced. Now here, it's disabled by default. We're going to leave it like that for now. We're just going to upload the tile file we created. There we are, client.tar. It's quite strange actually because once you've configured that, it doesn't really give you any feedback as to one, how it was imported. It just says importing and it doesn't list the file or any inclination that this the import was successful um, so there we go it's imported now as you can see there's no indication you know whether it was successful or not so we just enable so we enable the phone the service and confirm and now the phone will reboot and if all goes well we should see our phone come online and register over the VPN. Let's go and have a look at the phone. The phone's still on its way up. And then straight away, we've got our VPN icon. And the phone has registered. There's our VPN icon. So now, I can dial our voicemail for our remote IP brick. You have one old message. Press one for old messages. Press two to change folders. Press three for advanced options. Press zero for mailbox options. Press stop. And there we have it. We have fully encrypted uh, voice communications directly to the IP brick. That's providing the VPN and also the um, the voice service as you can see it's um, there is a few steps to configuring VPN but it's worth it um, hopefully v uh, other year link will provide a tool to make this a bit easier it, you know it could be a bit cumbersome if you're deploying a number of these phones but now this phone can be taken anywhere in the world as long as you've allowed 1194 UDP out the firewall, this phone can be taken anywhere in the world and you've now got secure access um, to your voicemail, make calls. Obviously it's a lot easier via IP brick. Um, I hope this video has proved useful. Um, it's taken a bit of time to put together, but um, I hope you find the results useful. Thanks for your time.